detail about the um, devices and go through some examples. So we have about 15,000 assets in our inventory. We have a variety of linear point and spatial assets. We have natural and constructive assets. And then we have three kind of different business areas. So we have three different groups of assets that we manage, and I'll talk about those in a minute. We also classify our assets. So we have right now about 350 different classifications or types of assets. In our water utility, we have 10 dams and reservoirs with a total storage capacity of about 170,000 acre feet. We have 152 miles of pipeline ranging in diameter from 24 inches to 120 inches. So we don't have a lot of pipeline, but it's pretty, it's all large pipeline. We have three drinking water treatment plants, capacities of 40, 80, and 100 MGD. We have one advanced, uh, eight MGD advanced wastewater treatment 400 acres of recharge ponds and six pump stations. In our watershed program, we have, well, there's 817 miles of creek in the county. Of that amount, we own and manage 279 miles. Then within that, there's 43 and a half miles of concrete line channel, 101 miles of levees, and we also have ecological assets, and we have mitigation areas, fish ladders, and then we have individual assets kind of along the banks of the creek that we also manage. We, in our administration program, this is where we have our uh, fleet assets, so vehicles and heavy equipment. We have our IT systems and then our administration buildings and grounds. So I'll do a little overview now on our condition assessment program. So the mobile um, assessment program, we've rolled it out in the watershed and water utility business areas. We haven't yet rolled it out in the administration area, and that's primarily because we haven't really seen a need to do it for, say, our IT and fleet assets. We do plan to roll it out for our buildings and, and grounds assets, but we haven't done that yet. In the watershed, we assess most of our creeks every year. That's our goal. Um, They've completed about 11,000 assessments in the last two and a half years using this new system. And the water utility, we, our goal is to assess our assets every two years. We don't always meet that goal. Um, we've done about 2,500 assessments in the last year and a half. And so just as we've seen in many other presentations this morning, we use a one to five scale to rate condition of our assets, uh, with one being good and five being end of life. So the way the, this works on our um, mobile devices, uh, to get to an overall condition score, we're looking at different parameters for different asset types. So for a pump, we're looking at, say, rust and oil, whereas for a creek, we're going to be looking at sedimentation and vegetation. So you get different kind of forms that pop up on the mobile device to lead you to this overall condition assessment score. Once we get the overall score, it's stored in our CMMS, which, um, yes, we do use Maximo. Um, and it becomes there, it's a component of our risk score, so the condition score really becomes our probability or likelihood of failure. Um, and then ultimately, the data is really useful. It helps us determine what maintenance projects we're going to work on in the coming year. So with that, I will turn it over to DePonker. So he'll talk more, again, about kind of the system architecture of this mobile system, and then go through a couple examples of how we do the assessments. Thanks, Aaron. Um, so I asked Bob to pass around one of, the, one of the mobile assessment systems. And if you have had a lot of breakfast and you have a lot of energy left, you can turn it on and start doing assessment of our systems, right? Using that. <laughs> well, if you have Wi-Fi access. <laughs> okay. So, uh, this part of the system, and maybe a lot of people criticize Maximo, so I can throw in my own one or two cents also. But, okay, when, when we started envisioning how to handle our uh, assets, which are not just at the treatment plant, but on creeks and other, and then there are pipelines. Uh, we have a very strong GIS group, uh, which can do programming. So that it, it's a little different between just having a GIS group and a GIS group which can write language in Python and things like that and do programming. But because San Jose State has a good GIS program at a master's level, they knew that. 
So one of the decisions they made was they would not use the Maximo's linear uh, asset module and, and other things because GIS did not, this is several years back, did not come in easily through uh, Maximo. So they decided to build it themselves and then integrate it into Maximo. So uh, when, you, when you take the device, you can check out packets of data. The reason we have packets of data is uh, the treatment plant inspection group may not want to see the recharge system or the watershed system and vice versa. So you, you can decide what you want to check out or IT can set it up that way that you can only check out something based on your login. And you get into the mobile device and I'll go into the history of uh, what sort of mobile device you use for which sort of uh, which sort of operator or inspector. You do your inspections, you come back in, um, and you check that data in. Now, you can, the device is capable of going to a Starbucks and sitting beside Gary and checking it in and showing oh, how good we are. But we don't allow that. We don't want to, uh, uh, at this time, we, we decided that people should come in and check the data in. Now, in water utility, they do have the cell phone network connection, and so they can do a lot more things in the field. But on watershed side, we felt that it was better to give you see the data, check it in. And then it goes into the Oracle database, and then into Maximum. So I'll explain a little bit of the link up between uh, the GIS system and Maximum. And it is a two-way link. Not everything can go two ways, like you cut. You, uh, you can update only certain fields in Maximo um, uh, uh, from GIS, and similarly you can export certain things from Maximo into the GIS system. So there are now about 20 devices, but some, uh, some are not in circulation and some are, are being used every day. So usually uh, the inspectors who use it every day have a device on their own. So now, between the water utility side uh, and the watershed side, they have different screens. And a decision was made uh, sometime back to give them different screens uh, because they needed different functionalities. So on a water utility, uh, the asset uh, inventory and the layout of the inventory gets downloaded onto your device. And then you can go through the inventory tree and select your facility and some others here will know better. So you can select, okay, where do you want here, the rain canal enforcement, you can select the equipment type. And in water and utility, they use the legacy intelligent numbering. So it comes up with E for equipment and some number after that. When you go to watershed, I'll just show you a slightly different uh, okay. okay. Now, what we did was, this was implemented first for, this, uh, for the work water shed and so we brought that knowledge over onto water utility. So when you go through and do the inspection and uh, you'll see over here okay the asset type comes up here and there'll be a specific form for that. Then you have photos which you can take in the field right using that device or using a separate camera which I didn't bring and then you can Bluetooth the photo into this device. So the photo will get attached to the asset and it will get checked in when you check the data in. So you can take your condition photos, you can take multiple photos. But what you have is over here, some things were highlighted. Okay, so the maximum asset ID is here, so you have doing inspection over there. And then in water, uh, water utility, uh, their inspection for, uh, well, if it was for a pump, there would be cavitation and things like that. So some things pop up over here. I think this, is, this form does not necessarily apply to the, this one, but anyway. Uh, we have specific forms for each type of asset and then you can enter your comments and uh, you will also be able to see if there were previous inspections done but I'll go through that on a separate slide. Okay. Then the part which, uh, which was developed here uh, actually on watersheds and then the same structure was used here is that when you check the data in you'll start getting the inspection score uh, which is the probability of failure score over here and whatever the number was here for that asset. Uh, so you get all this data in, in Maximo and then you can export it to a financial management or some other asset management software from Maximo. So a lot of the discussion in the morning was on developing this, these links. And so uh, you keep working on it and you make it more sophisticated as you go along. 
So the watershed side uh, is, of course, uh, a lot more difficult in that you have a lot of spatial assets. So when you look up at the top, you have the, the CA stands for condition assessment, but you also have another tool called AI, which doesn't stand for artificial intelligence, it stands for asset inventory. So what was given to them was the ability to add assets that you discover in the field in creeks and things like that, which may be a legacy asset done by a farmer and things like that, just some impact on our operations. So you have a mobile asset inventory tool too, which we will not go into in, in detail. But what happens is once you add these assets in, when you go to the field, uh, the GI system, when you put your stylus on the device, so this is an ortho photo that comes up. So the, so the device is talking to the satellites. So based on where you are, this ortho photo layer will position itself. And then you can zoom in. And then you put your stylus down. And when you put your stylus down, it will do a search for all the assets within 50 or 150 feet, depending on how it is set up. And so all the assets in the inventory that are within a certain distance from where you put your stylus, let's say we put our stylus down over here, everything within 150 feet will show up. There's a bed of the creek, there's a bridge, which is this bridge, there's the left bank, right bank, which are inventory, there are separate assets. And then if you had a weir, if you had some other, other stuff, and all, all those would pop up over here. You select which asset you want to do a condition assessment on from this list, and then you proceed. So now when you see all this backlining and all these, these will show up if it was inventoried over there. Uh, you have two different types of conditions that we do. We do point conditions as if it was a pump or something like that, or a spot condition, or you can do a linear condition. So when you have a linear condition, and this is important because now the regulations require us to say, okay, what was the length of impact uh, or the spatial area of impact? So linear condition, they digitize it in the field, and then before you check it in, you can uh, change your coordinates or whatever. But you can draw it in right over here, like they have drawn a linear condition. Let's say they had some sediment depositing over here, they'll do that. Or if you were on a pipeline, you can do uh, how much of the paint is peeling from which point to which point, you can digitize it right on the pipeline. So then, once that is done, what happens is this field, based on what you digitize, this field gets populated automatically. So it took out a lot of the guessing that one would have to do. Prior to this, the operators would, uh, or the inspector would walk and count the number of bases they walk. If they stumbled or forgot the number of bases while walking, they will still enter a number. And so we may have entered 140 instead of 40, so now we avoid all of this. So then the condition score, and here you can see a transition in the organization. So I don't know how many of you uh, feel this and how you work, uh, how you figure out a way to work through it, but in our organization, well, one part of the organization, or some people will say, oh, one through five is fine. But in another part, they would say, no, 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 we have to stick to our A through E system. So rather than fight and try to make force a change from an A through E method of condition assessment, when you are working on also on the technology side, you can say, okay, we'll just write a code behind the scenes that if someone gives a C, it will automatically in the system put it as a three, but we will display both so that one part of the organization doesn't feel like they got left out and we move them to something else. So, so those are the little tricks you have to use as you go along. One minute left? Okay. So to, uh, to uh, get adoption. Then the photograph that you take, uh, one of the things we used to have a problem with is photos go into a different, but well, they still go into a different database, but uh, it, it's not siloed off into some other database. So the photo gets attached to the condition that you did, and the condition is attached to the asset. So now the photos can be managed more readily and reported on. Now when we check the data in, that it, this is the maximum screen, that condition assessment score, whatever it was done, three or some, uh, whatever the number is, does go into maximum. Uh, the, G, uh, the GPS coordinates are all generated in the field uh, from the digitization, so all that is generated and the stationing will be generated automatically and this score goes in. So it, it has improved our ability to QA, QC the data and, you know, uh, go, go through an assessment of the data. 
So the last slide, so it has automated the process. It can, over time, achieve significant process efficiencies. It does not happen on the same day. The first two years, the management may think it generated a lot of inefficiencies. But it does, over time, generate, just remove the IN and make it efficiencies. Yeah. Then, oh, sorry, it ties it. OK, go back to this slide. I don't know, the back button is not working. But anyway, it, uh, you can tie it conditions to assets more easily. And it's important for spatial assets. It allows field, uh, field staff to capture a lot more information. You can see past conditions. And there was a discussion on tiered inspections. Yes, we do tiered inspections, especially if the engineer goes in later on to review something. And you can add an inspection. And the system will always take the latest inspection and the rating of that as the score. And uh, over time, you'll see reduced errors in the system. 